Hi guys. I hope you're having a good day today. Let me just get get set up for it. I don't know about you guys, but for me, where I live in this in this city where I live, it's so hot. It's been hot forever. And it's kind of really hot. And in a bad way. So I hope you guys are staying cool. Today, um, my sermon is called Every Christian's Dilemma. Um, but, but first, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this um, moment you've given us together, Lord God. Speak to me. Speak through me and help me do what you've called me to do. And Lord, help us to every day strive to be more like you. In the name of Jesus, hide me behind the cross. I'm yours right now. Let Rachel die in Jesus' name. In me, Lord God, speak through me through your Holy Spirit. Take over my tongue. Let me say words that I, that I haven't planned to say. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, I've been thinking a lot this week about myself and my own personal struggles and I thought it would be wise to share with you what I'm kind of learning so we can be in this together. Sometimes when you are when you're a Christian you have moments where you love being saved, you love being a Christian, you love Jesus, everything is going well. But there are other times Especially when you fall into t to sin or into temptation, where you're just you you're just um you just don't think you're good enough to be a Christian. Like your sin is so bad. Sorry, the beeping is just me switching modes. Um, like your sin is so bad and everyone else's sin is okay um and everyone else doesn't struggle the way you struggle and how could god love you uh, when you struggle so much but um he wants to t me to tell myself and you that not only does he love you but he's going to use your sin, your struggle, to help someone someday. And we, we, we tend to think that we're the only ones going through this. And he wants me to tell you, like the title of the sermon, this is everyone's dilemma, not just yours. See, the thing with, with Satan is he would love to isolate you and make you think that everyone you see at church and everyone you see at work and everyone you see when you go through your daily activities um, um, have struggles, but they're not as bad as yours. When in reality, it might take a different... Uh, a face or it might put on a different mask but it's but it's the same struggle we all struggle with with different things and what I've learned is um, that although I struggle with certain temptations not to beat myself up about it because first of all, beating yourself up about falling or struggling with some kind of temptation isn't going to help. 
you just have to face it and be honest and be open to what God <clears throat> to what God is doing through that temp through that experience and sometimes what I'm learning is I have to be honest about sometimes there is a dichotomy between where you are and where you want to be. Uh, Stephen Furtick uh, calls it the gap. Um, he said there are two gaps. There's a gap between where you were and where you are now. And there's an even bigger gap with where you are now and where you want to be. So basically, we, when we overcome one hurdle, another hurdle is just around the corner. And the Lord wants us to know He's going to use our struggles, He's going to use our pain for His glory and His good. And, um, like I was thinking, I was thinking this week, I was thinking, Oh gosh, how could I be a preacher? How could I be a pastor? Um, when I struggle so hard with this thing, with all these sexual desires, with being single at 35, with um, reading things that I shouldn't, um, how can... How can I teach people about your word when I'm struggling so hard? And the Lord said, it is your struggle that will draw people to you. Um, there's been times where um, preachers have pretended like they were, not pretended like they were, but they've, they put on this air of being perfect, of being having it all together, having the family, the husband and wife and kids, and no problems. But this generation of preachers is so open to say that they are not perfect, that they are not um, um, to be put on pedestals, that they're just um, regular people that happen to be called by God, but it, it to preach, but it doesn't mean that they're indestructible. And I would say to any pastor out there, it's okay to show your scars. It's okay to show your vulnerability. I'm very big on vulnerability. And when you show your um, vulnerability, it gives it the devil less hold. And when you show your vulnerability um, to the right people, they can help you work through it. When you show your vulnerability to God, He can help you work through it. And, and um, God also wants me to say, you are not too broken to be used. Your sin is not too bad. He is going to use you and it for His glory. And what we need to understand is God doesn't look at us the way people look at us. Um, when I was in, in Bible college, um, there was this story called um, Dante's Inferno. And Dante said they, there were different levels of hell for different sins. And, and, um, and there was this level of hell for that sin and this level of hell for that sin. And like the certain rings of hell for certain sins. But really, there's only, there's only one there's only one hell. There are not different levels of hell for different sins. So no sin is worse than another sin. So my sin, my sin 
of lust and whatever is no different than some of these sin of gossip. We're all struggling some, someplace, somewhere, and it, and it takes on different forms, but it's the same, it's the same underlying, um, it's the same underlying sin. It's the same, it's the same sin underneath. Um, it. It's so interesting that as humans, we like to throw stones at people who don't have our, have our proclivities. So if somebody is gay and living with a partner, a male partner, we think that's awful where as we gossip with our girlfriends, and we think it's okay. We're just we're just doing a prayer request, or, or I just told this person as a matter of prayer. Whereas God sees that as the same thing, and grace is so powerful. Grace is not a get out of jail free card, which I've said. Grace makes you stand at attention and be grateful for what God has done. It makes you stand amazed and it makes you stand humble. Um, I always say, because you know what, what people say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Um, that's a great quote from an old song, but I was thinking to myself the other day um, um, that when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I, I don't want to show hallelujah. I want to get down on my knees and cry um, because of how unholy I am and how holy he is and how his grace covers me and how his grace found me and and digs me out of whatever hole I'm in and says Rachel it is sin but I still love you and we'll work through it together don't beat yourself up We'll work through it together. And at the end of the day, you'll be better for it. And he says, Rachel, you won't always struggle with this. You won't always have this issue. It's just for now, and I will use you through it. And it makes me feel so loved. And what the cure for this is to embrace the love of God and this whole sermon is not to excuse sin it's not to say oh God loves you it doesn't matter but it's to say that God covers you although it is still sin although it is still wrong he covers you and loves you regardless and he wants you to know that wherever you are Whatever you find yourself today, he covers you and loves you and wants to be with you regardless. You are not too dirty. You are not too broken. He will use your past. He will use your present. He will use all the pieces of your heart to mend into something beautiful, to make into his own masterpiece and that's what he wants me to tell you today wherever you find yourself all you all you ha have to do is if you're not where you want to be or where you think you should be all you need to do is be honest with God and that's how I'm getting through my struggles and my own personal 
um, demons, if you will. It's just being honest with God to say, God, I'm struggling with lust, or God, I'm struggling with acceptance, or God, I'm struggling with gossip, or God, I'm struggling with um, wanting to take pills, or God, I'm struggling with um, this, and, and he'll help you with this. I think the thing, I think, I think the problem with the church is we've taught people how to raise their hands. We've taught people how to, how to do these different things. We've taught people how to work with it, but we haven't really said to people, it's okay to admit that you're here and you want to be here. It's okay. It's okay that you're not perfect. It's okay that you struggle with this because we all struggle. The person beside you may not struggle with what you struggle with, but they do struggle with something. They are having to deal with something and they're no better than you. I don't care how they look or how they dress or how they put on or how they say their family is so perfect and yours is falling apart. They have issues just like you do and what we need to do is come together and say, I'm broken, you're broken, let's, let's together work this out with God. I, I wish a long, I, I pray one day that along with the spiritualness of church that we um, have more tools to be more practical, not to um, just push the spirit, spirituality out, but to combine it with practicality um, to give people tools how to come to God with their with their issues, with their struggles, and to let them know it's okay to hurt, it's okay to bleed, it's okay to um, to come to that place of pain. And because it, when you admit that you struggle and you come to that place of pain, um, God can help you, people can help you, your, your pastors can help you, Trusted friends can help you. Counselors can help you. But if you don't come to that place of pain and stop hiding, no one can help you. The Lord knows. The Lord sees what your pain is. The Lord sees what you're hiding. And he's saying, Beloved, you don't have to hide from me anymore. You don't have to pretend that things are all right when they're not. You can, you can cry. You can, uh, you can be just me. Come to, he said, come to me. All, all you that la labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants to give you rest today, but he can't give you rest unless you come to him and say, God, I'm struggling. God, I'm hurting. God, I just need you. And he wants you to say, I need you. Not, not in the Christian way that, that we're accustomed to. Not in church, but in private. He needs, he needs you to overflow and spill what's in your heart before he can heal it. He's not a rapist. He won't take something that isn't freely given to him. So give it to him today. Beloved, I know it's scary, it's scary, but once you give your pain to God, once you give your sin to God, he can help you work through it. He can send people in your life to help you work through it. Um, he can lead you to counselors that'll help you work through it. But don't stay there by yourself. Join a community. 
join a Bible study, join a Bible believing church that loves you and doesn't judge you. Join, jo join somebody who can help you, who can be with you, who can walk with you. Beloved, you're not an island. And when you give your pain to God, and when you give your sin to God, it's such a freeing um, time. It's so amazing. I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for this time, and I thank you for this moment. And I, I thank you for teaching us that the cross is for every one of us, um, from, from the prophet to the pew, from, from the White House and, and Parliament to the person on the street. You died and you love everyone else, every one of us just the same. We love you, we thank you. Heal every heart, restore every soul, fix every broken piece. Oh God, send help where there needs to be help. Send restoration where there needs to be restoration. Send healing where there needs to be healing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I will see you next week. Bye.